minus one. We are at the starting line. Your program begins tomorrow. So today, this is the final prep video, and we're just gonna cover a little bit more about the raw foods that you're gonna be eating today, the six cups of greens you're gonna add to your diet today, and then I wanna talk to you about um, what you might experience with your sleep regarding the upcoming program. So we've covered this briefly in a previous video, but I just wanna reiterate that the raw food day today is such a great break for your digestive system to just take a rest because um, those heavily processed foods can really take four or more hours to digest. And the raw foods take one to maybe two hours to completely digest and then your body can go back to doing other things besides digesting. And also on raw foods, you're just eating so many nutrients. It's just a flood of nourishment for your whole body. You'll see in your information guide that today you'll be adding six cups of leafy greens to your raw diet. So dark leafy greens are the, literally the most nutritious foods on the planet. They've got the most nutrition per calorie of any other food. They also are full of antioxidants, which prevent or slow damage to cells caused by free radicals. They're anti-inflammatory, they are packed with fiber. They can significantly reduce high blood pressure. Um, they can improve immunity and they're great for gut health and they're good for your heart, bones, and skin. For today though, you can have any type of leafy greens that you'd like. So that's any mix of bitter greens, any types of lettuce or microgreens. And don't forget you can add in a bunch of fresh herbs as well. So it's easy to get in these six cups if you just have one large salad. Um, you could also add it to anything you put in the blender. So that's a dip, a sauce, a dressing, an ice cream, um, smoothie, smoothie bowl. Or um, you can also use it maybe to make wraps. So take a couple of large lettuce leaves and double them up and add in a dip dressing or sauce that you make in the blender raw. And then add in some more fresh vegetables and wrap it up. And that'll take care of a good bit of those too. I also want to add that your body does require a little bit of fat to be able to absorb the most nutrients out of your food. So today I would pick the largest meal or the meal that has the most phytonutrients. Those are the darkest colored raw fruits and vegetables. And with that meal, add in your flax or chia so that your body's got some fat to be able to make the most out of those nutrients. Okay, that's all I've got on nutrition today. Now let's talk about your intermittent fasting and what to expect. So you're gonna have three decisions to make. The first is gonna be which intermittent fasting window you're gonna pick. So there's the 20 and four, there's the 18 and six, and there's the 16 and eight. And the largest number is your number of hours that you're gonna fast, and so you're just gonna have water, or like we talked about, um, one of the appropriate drinks. And then you're gonna have um, the smaller window is your feeding window. So that's the first decision. The second decision you're gonna make is what time you're gonna start your feeding window and what time you're gonna end it. And those really need to be consistent. Both of those decisions need to be consistent throughout the 10 day program because your body is used to feeding at certain intervals right now. Whatever style of eating you're on, your body's very accustomed to it. And that sort of is leading and driving your hunger cues. Now, when you make a conscious decision to move to intermittent fasting and prolonged fasting, you're changing up the patterns and your body, your primitive brain is thinking, oh shoot, when's the food coming? I'm used to getting food right now. And your body is gonna behave differently when it thinks it's starving and it's gonna behave differently when it knows that it's fasting. They're very different and your body has very different responses to them. So when you provide your body with a consistent change and you just start doing that from day one, it's gonna recognize immediately that it's not starving, it's just fasting and healing. And the third decision that you're gonna make is how long your prolonged water fast will last. So I'm gonna show you the math breakdown here. If you're doing a 16 hour fast and an eight hour feeding window, and then you choose a 36 hour prolonged water fast, what it looks like is, let's say you decide your feeding window is gonna be 10 a.m. until 6 p.m., that's your eight hours, and you do that 36 hour fast, so you'll stop eating on day two of the program at 6 p.m., and then you fast forward 36 hours, and then you're scheduled to break your fast at 6 a.m. on day four. 
and that begins your new feeding window on day four. And then you'll just, your feeding window on day four would be 6 a.m. until 2 p.m. And now you've got a new window. Now it's possible to do that, but just think about what your lifestyle is like and whether breaking at 6 a.m. makes sense for you. Now, if we use the same 16 and eight window, but you opt for a 40 hour fast, let's pretend you've still got that 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. feeding window and you wanna do a 40 hour water fast. You stop eating at 6 p.m., fast forward 40 hours, and then you're back to breaking your fast on day four at 10 a.m. So that one would be the most consistent way to go and a modest 40 hour prolonged fast. Now you don't have to match your prolonged fast to align with your original intermittent fasting window, but if you choose not to, think about when you'd like to break the prolonged fast and then you can adjust your daily feeding window around that. So back to this example, if you want to do the 16 and eight and you wanna do a 36 hour fast, but you really don't wanna break until at least 8 a.m., then you can start eating on day one two hours later. So you would start at 10 a.m. and eat until 8 p.m. The reason that's probably not the first option is just because we'd like for you to plan to stop eating at least two hours, but preferably three hours before you go to bed so that your body is not doing any digesting while you're trying to sleep. I also want to explain how the meals are going to work. So during your program, you're probably going to hear the term book ends quite a bit. And what that means is the way you start and end your fast. And they're the same. Every feeding day you have, you're going to start breaking your fast with the broth. And then you're going to have the salad. And that's the first bookend. The second bookend of each day is the reverse. You're going to have your greens and then you're going to end with the broth. And those are just very light, easy to digest, very nutritious foods. They're gonna help your body start to prepare to digest and then ease out of digestion and into resting and healing at the end of the day. So those are the bookends. And you'll wanna make sure that you have the time and the room in your stomach to get those bookends, bookends in every day. The other um, required meal for all of the options, whether you're doing the 20 and four, the 18 and six, or the 16 and eight, is meal number one. So you do the bookends to break your fast, so that's the broth and the greens, well, it's a salad, and then you have meal number one at some point during your feeding window, and then you move on to the greens and the broth at the end of the day. And it might take you a few days to figure out how much your stomach can handle with these new foods and the proportions of them, and also this small feeding window. So you might feel like it's gonna be easy to get all that food in and then still have room for the greens and the broth at the end, and you might find that you don't. So just be aware of that, that those are the most important parts, and we really want you to get as much of meal number one in as possible, no matter which feeding window you're on. All right, so if you're on the 20 and four window, you get the bookends and meal number one, and that's all the food for the whole day on your feeding days. If you're doing the next level down, that's the 18 hour fast and six hour window, you have the option to add meal number two. It's not mandatory, but you've got a couple extra hours. If you're hungry, you can enjoy meal number two. And then if you're doing the, um, the, the shortest of the fasting window, that's the 16 hour fast and an eight hour feeding window, you've got quite a bit of time to eat. So you do both of the bookends, you definitely do meal number one, you're welcome to have meal number two if you'd like, and then after you're finished with meal number two, you're welcome to have meal number three as well. And finally, I wanna to talk to you about your sleep and what you might experience during the program. So there's really three things that we would expect to happen. Either you could start sleeping better you could have your sleep remain the exact same, or you might find that you've got some difficulty sleeping on the program. So if your sleep improves, there's a couple reasons that might be happening. The first is that you're stopping eating about three hours, maybe even more before you go to bed. So your body is completely done digesting before you ever lay down, and that just provides a more restful sleep. The other thing that might be happening is 
um, that your body has um, a naturally lower temperature when you stop eating. That's the thermodynamic effect of food. Your digestion causes um, a little bit of heat increase in your body. So your temperature is higher while digesting and it's lower when it's not. And because you're gonna spend so many hours not digesting, your body temperature is naturally gonna be a little bit lower and that might cause you to be a little more sleepy and then have a more restful sleep. Now, if you experience some difficulty in sleeping, there are many reasons why that might be happening. One is that all of the things that we knew that we knew about nutrition and dieting um, are kind of being turned on their head right now. And so you might just have a lot more information about diet and nutrition and all the other dimensions where um, you're just thinking about it more. And so you might just be laying in bed having thoughts. Uh, another it could be hunger. Your body is used to eating at certain times and your brain is controlling those normal um, cues. So you might lay in bed thinking you're hungry and your body's not. Your body is gonna get plenty of nutrients. Um, we're just changing how it's behaving and you might feel like you're hungry while you work that out. Uh, another might just be an active body. Your body is going to be actively cleaning and healing stuff that it hasn't been able to get to for quite some time. Um, and so that might just cause you to be a little more alert and awake while your body's working so hard, especially in the first few days. Uh, the next one is melatonin. Um, it's been found that when your body is in deep cleaning mode, sometimes it produces a little less melatonin. So on your prolonged fasting days, that could be something that's going on and helping you to stay awake a little bit more than you'd like. Um, also, cortisol could be a reason. It's been found that limiting calories could spike your cortisol um, a little bit. That also will normalize if that occurs. And then this one's interesting. This is about your circadian rhythm. So your body has one master clock and that is located in the nucleus of the hypothalamus. And then each individual cell in your body also has its like little clocks that it's running on as well. And that's your circadian rhythm, that whole balance of all the clocks. And now if you were to have a different clock in each room of your house and it's battery operated, they're going to um, eventually like get out of sync a little bit. And the longer it goes unchecked, the more out of sync your clocks can become. It's sort of the same thing in your body. Your body will resync clocks every so often on its own. Um, as we're changing how we eat, it changes our circadian rhythm and our, our body's natural desire to be wakeful and sleepy. And um, the cells may not catch up as fast as our central clock. So that'll be something that could happen, but it will adjust itself over time. The next one is ketosis and the adrenaline response. Now with ketosis, um, this really occurs when you do a prolonged fast of several days or more. So um, that's not necessarily what's happening during this fast, but when your body goes into ketosis, it does um, produce a little bit more adrenaline. So that happens throughout the night and throughout the day um, and just until your body gets used to ketosis. But if, you know, if adrenaline is spiked, that could cause you to be a little bit uh, more awake at night, but it also might cause you to be a little more awake during the day. So it could balance itself out there for sleepiness. The most fascinating reason I think that we do have trouble sleeping during intermittent and prolonged fasting is the primitive brain is designed with a fight or flight response. So our caveman brains haven't evolved the way our food practices have. And so that fight, flight, or now I guess it's fight, flight, and freeze response, um, that is still prevalent in modern humans. So what could be happening is when you restrict your feeding window, your brain believes that there's danger. So the danger could be um, famine. It could be maybe there's a vicious animal blocking your exit of the cave so you can't obtain food. And um, it just keeps you in a heightened state of readiness because there is something dangerous happening. So it literally is like having a proverbial eye staying open while you're asleep to preserve your life. So um, there are a few cures for sleeplessness during the 10-day program. The first and most important is patience. 
Um, we're taking 10 days out to do something that we've never done before and being patient and letting your body adjust in the time and the way that it needs to is probably the way to go. So patience is the first cure. The next one is water. This will be a theme throughout the next 10 days and hopefully you carry this with you forever. But uh, water cures everything. And so if you can't sleep uh, and you can take a couple of sips, that's, it might help um, your sleep or it might help something else. But water is a great cure for any ailment that you've got. Um, and finally, your diet. Make sure that you're getting in those bookends and all of that nutrition from meal one. Um, that is going to help you sleep better because your body's going to have all of the resources and fuel that it needs to do all the work that we're allowing it to do. All right, it's time to wrap it up. So today, if you haven't already, please try to make all of your um, protocol recipes today. Tomorrow it's doable, but it might be a little bit tight, especially if you've got an earlier um, window to feed. And tonight, make sure that whatever time you've selected for your intermittent fasts, stop eating tonight at the end time so that tomorrow when you break your fast, you'll have one full intermittent fast under your belt. And I just wanna talk about um, some last words of um, advice for you. You have decided to make a commitment to yourself for just 10 days and at whatever expense that is, maybe there's some other things that have to drop off for you to spend all this time um, really committing to yourself and reflecting and changing some things about the way you think and your behaviors around food, nutrition, and the other six dimensions of your life or the other five dimensions of your life. So just realize that you might have some struggles, but that they're worth it. And um, I would suggest making the commitment to yourself that no matter what happens, you're going to stick it out. So follow the food protocol and stick to your window and stick to the decisions that you make. Um, I would also encourage you to try everything. If you're not normally a social person and you don't normally text all day and all night, um, just try it with this group. Um, you know, you're doing this new thing for 10 days, really immerse yourself in it. You may not take everything from the program into your life after the program, but you don't know until you try. So try the Tibetan rites and try the dry brushing. Try all the self-care recipes like the mouthwash and the lotions. Um, interact with everybody in the group and show up and um, do the writing exercises and it's really gonna pay off. So I think that you're very well prepared. You're gonna do excellent and enjoy your healing. Take care guys.